We're back, 4-Hers. I'm Mindy at the Extension Office, and we are up to the final section of your 4-H record book. So we've talked about all of the parts and pieces that come together, and now this is kind of the heart of your book, and that's your project forms. So this section is going to include, there's a specific form for each project with the information that includes a brief for, story for that project, and then you get one page of photos for specifically that project that you can include. You can have as many projects in this section as you want, but you kind of want to think about the quality of what you're putting in there. So really to complete a project, what we expect is that you did a demonstration related to that, that you exhibited something somewhere related to that project, and then that you complete the record form to go with that. So if you have some projects that you've just kind of been in and not really done a lot with and maybe never done a demonstration for that project, you might not want to do a record form for that because you haven't got it complete. But we know now for next year, hey, we got to make sure we get that demonstration done so that we can include it within our book. But we want to know the quality of the projects that you've worked with. So anywhere from one to probably four, maybe five projects is about right for doing your book. Because most of us, even though we may enroll in 10 or 15 projects, we're not necessarily completing all the steps and really engaged in all of those projects. You may be, and if you are, you're welcome to put all of that in your book. Remember the way we score it, each project is, sheet is worth 30 points. But for your total on your overall book, we're going to take all of your scores and average them. So if you do uh, four project sheets, each sheet's going to be scored individually, and then we'll add that together, divide it by four. So if you put in a lot of sheets that aren't complete, where you don't have a lot of information, that's going to kind of hurt your score in the long run. So remember, part of what we're doing with our book is focusing on our accomplishments, on the goals we set and achieved. And so we really want to look at what were those projects that I gave my all to, that I feel were a really quality experience for me this year. And that's what we want to work, work on and move forward with. So in selecting the projects that we want to include in our book, there are four basic forms along with discipline forms for shooting sports. So if you shoot, for a shotgun, rifle, pistol, muzzleloader, archery, any of those disciplines within shooting sports, there are specific sheets for just those because they're very specific to the discipline, the types of things and activities that you do within that. So you're going to want to get those. We have a link from our website to the state website, which is where all of these are housed. So these project forms are used across the state, not just in Curry County. They are available as Word documents, just like we talked about with our other forms. You can go in and add, delete, put in all your information, type it up, or you can straight up print it out and handwrite the information in. It is up to you. We don't require one way over the other. What we're going to look at is neatness. Can we read it? Is the content well done? Is it appropriate? So those are things you're going to want to think about and remember as you put information in. And I know what some families choose to do is they handwrite the information in and make sure they have it all. And then they go back and type it into the form. Now, again, remember, this is your book. The expectation is that you as the youth are compiling the information and putting it all where it needs to be. So you may have some help with typing or you may have some help with spelling and getting the words in the right place. But ultimately, the expectation is that the youth is putting this together and learning the skills needed to keep records. So what we also have then on top of those shooting sports one, there is, you can see a self-determined project record. Those are for those projects where we're not necessarily providing the guidance or the manuals to do that, but you as the youth are choosing what you wanna do and putting that information together and essentially building your own project. And then we have our livestock, our animal project records. That's a key one. It's going to be really important. If you're keeping livestock, you should be keeping records. So then we have our foods project. If you're in anything that's food related, baking, any of the cooking things, this is the form you're going to want to use. And then we have just the general 4-H project record sheet. 
Now you can see these forms all look very similar. They have a different title. They have a different publication number there at the top so we can keep them sorted out. But for the most part, they're gonna have the same sections with a few differences. So for instance, the food sheet is the same other than it has a page for you to, to do some evaluation of the food that you've made or created. Uh, the animal sheet is a little more in depth, obviously on your financials and what you're gonna keep for that. So let's look at what the sections are, the core pieces that you're gonna need to have to complete your project records. So first off, your project goals. We're gonna to wanna to know what are the goals that I set to do in this project, okay? Good rule, three to five goals for any particular project that you're including. If you've never done a book before, I understand that, and you may not have set goals at the beginning of the year. So that's okay. Think back to the kind of things you wanted to do. Maybe your whole goal was just to start the project, to get an animal, to, to learn a specific skill. All of those things are very doable goals. Now's a good time while you're evaluating your goals from last year to set goals for next year and make a note of that. And the next year, when we get ready to do our record book, there's your goals. They're already done and set. So we're going to have three to five goals for the project. The next section are we're going to list off some of the things we learned. Hopefully, they're going to match up to those three to five goals. So I want you to tell me three to five things you learned. They may be completely different than what your goals were. Maybe you went to a really cool workshop and learned something you didn't expect. Maybe you had a goal that you didn't quite reach because you didn't quite get to do that. That's okay. You can tell me that right here, that you learned it was harder than you thought it was going to be to do that. And maybe that you figured out some things you're going to do differently next time. So that's what's going to go on this first page, your goals and the things that you learned. Now, this is not your story. These are not paragraphs. These are short, concise statements that kind of sum up what you've done this year. Okay, that next page, we're going to talk about our project activities. So we've told me what you learned. Now you're going to tell me how you learned it. What are the things you did? So you can see, remember I said, part of what we expect is that you did um, some talks or some demonstrations related to your project. So this one specifically talks about talks. Maybe you gave a report at your club meeting. Maybe you were at um, one of our events and you were asked about your project and you shared information. Maybe you helped with the animal ag station at the fair and you didn't really have an, a prepared entire demonstration. You just talked about some of the things you have done. That's where this would go. Then we have a place to list project meetings and practices related specifically to this project. You know what? Maybe we didn't have a rabbit club this year and you didn't go to any practices. That's okay. You're going to put NA for not applicable and then just a brief little sentence that says, I did this on my own. I didn't go to project meetings and practices. I did this on my own. And that's an acceptable thing to put. But remember, when we talk about our forms, we don't want to leave them blank. We want to make sure that everybody knows we didn't just skip that section, that we understand what it is and what it's asking for. Maybe we just didn't have or do that. Okay, so then, then we're gonna ask about your demonstrations. Now, these are those prepared, hardcore, I was ready and going and I had a poster, I had a visual aid, I took my dog and it demonstrated how to do the commands. Those things are going to be your demonstrations. And everyone, who's completed a project should have done a demonstration related to that project. Okay, so remember that, and you wanna list that here. Did you do it at the club, at the county level? Did you do something at the state level? That's what that level's asking for. You're gonna tell me the title of the demonstration and then where did you do it? I did it at county contest. I did it at my 4-H club meeting. Okay, wherever you were invited to present that. And then you're gonna list your exhibits. So did you show a lamb at the county fair in your market lamb project? That's what you're gonna list, okay? That you, and if you exhibited three or four, you can list the breeds, you can say three lambs, however you wanna list it out there. And then where you exhibit it, Curry County Fair, Eastern New Mexico State Fair. Did you make a poster about those lambs? So you're gonna list that here, okay? Sheep poster, 
Where did you exhibit it? Curry County Fair. Those are going to be key things for what you did as part of your project. Okay, so whether it's your livestock, if you were in sewing, what did you exhibit? Okay, did you bring your, your gathered skirt, your scrunchie? What are the things that you brought to the fair? So those are going to apply to all of these different projects. There's the opportunity for demonstrations and exhibits. So then this page where we still talk about other 4-H activities, project activities that you did, these are going to be things you did. What were the resources? What were the things you did on your own? Maybe you didn't have other club meeting, other project meetings or practices to go to for specific contests, but you really wanted to learn more about showmanship and you watched videos on the computer about how to do that well. Those are the kind of things you're going to list here. Maybe you practiced on your own. Again, you did research for your poster and put your poster together. All of those activities that you did on your own as part of your project, you're going to want to list here in this section so that that information is captured there, how much time you really put into it and how much you actually wanted to do with this project. Okay, now again, getting your demonstration together, making your exhibits, walking your lambs, getting everything set, that's all gonna be important parts. Now in a livestock form, you're gonna have another place to put this as well because you've got a place for monthly activities specifically to talk about um, your vaccinations and all of the special things that go along with raising livestock. So then you have your place, again, we've had our very specific professional form that we're going to fill in information and be succinct and have that in there. Now you have that creative option of sharing some information. You can use exactly the same format that you did with your overall 4-H story. It's just going to be a little shorter. We're, we're talking, you know, two paragraphs about a page. That's what you're going to want to see on this record form. You can see that's the space we've given. You may go over a little I understand that, but you don't get six pages to add for your project story for your record sheet. So just think about what were some of the best things you did? What are the highlights from that project that you want to share? And maybe even, you know, I'm going to repeat this project next year. Here's a goal I've set for next year. And you can include those types of things in your project story. Now on these forms, there's one more place for a signature. This is for you as the member to sign. Your parent and your leader are gonna sign that county form for your overall book. But when it comes to each project, that responsibility comes back to you to sign off that yes, this is my work, this is what I did. And I'm telling everybody, um, I'm, I'm being accurate about what I accomplished this past year. So you wanna make sure there's a line there for a signature. You wanna make sure you sign it because technically it's not complete if you don't sign it. So now the other piece and what some people find really difficult to keep track of is going to be your financial records. Now every project doesn't necessarily have a financial component. Okay, typically one of the big projects my son has always done is public speaking. And so we don't usually have much financial to go along with public speaking, particularly if we don't travel somewhere for a contest. So we wouldn't have to have the financial page for that one. In a general project, you're going to include the financials just if you need to. So when we talk about our photography project, we're going to include this because we had to get pictures developed. We had to purchase the backing to exhibit those at the fair, all of those parts and pieces that go along with doing the photography project. Maybe this is the year you bought a camera. Maybe this is the year you did some other type of technology. You downloaded some software. Those kind of things would be included in your financial piece. If you are showing livestock or raising other animals, that's the said that on the livestock sheet, it's a little different because you've got a few more steps to help you walk through it. But it's very obviously going to have a financial component because if you have an animal, you have to feed it. So you're going to document your vet bills, your feeding, if you have to do, for instance, with horses, if you've had them shoot, if you had their hoofs trimmed, 
if you have to get hauling papers or health papers for your animals. All of those things contribute to the expense of that project. And you may or may not always have income. So remember, consider if you receive premium money back from the fair, if you got to go through the sale and received add-ons, those are going to be things you can list as income related to that project. Or if you sell it to the packer or to another family or group uh, for meat, that's something else that you can list as income related specifically to that project. So now remember, you're gonna account for all of your animals. If you did had four swine in your pig project, you're gonna include all of them on that sheet in your financials. So you're gonna start off with an opening inventory. And I know this gets a little confusing. And again, on the livestock sheets, it spells it out a little differently for you, how you add things back in and subtract them back out because you're more likely to have inventory related to those types of projects. Your opening inventory is as of October 1 of the last year, what did I have? Did I have animals already? Did I have um, scales? Did I have pens? Did I have feeders, buckets? All of the things that go along with that particular project. What are the things I already had? Then we're gonna have the year. So beginning in October, how many times did I buy feed? Did I have to go to the vet? I'm gonna list out all of those things and how much they cost or the income that I received. It's just a balance sheet. You fill in the table with all of that information. Then I'm gonna have a closing inventory. So what that is, is as of September 30th of this year, what do I have now? Do I have things that broke that I threw away? Do I have things I purchased throughout the year that now I have to keep as part of my inventory? We may have things that move in and out because you purchase them within the 4-H year and they're gone before the end of the 4-H year. So they're not on either inventory because you didn't keep them. That's okay. The key thing when we talk about your inventories is putting the value on items. The majority of things when you purchase them you pay more than they're worth once you've used them. So remember, so for instance, if a trailer is on your inventory because that's something you use, chances are you could not go out and sell that trailer for exactly what you paid for it. So you've got to think about, okay, it's 10 years old now. What is it realistically worth? Okay, and it's probably not going to be worth the same five years from now as it is right now. So valuing things can be kind of difficult. And that's a point where it's very helpful to talk to some of our producers to come in and visit with us at the extension office and get an idea of what that actual value is. Now, why does it matter? Accurate records matter. As you become adults and you have to track your expenses and your income and you have to account for your money and be able to manage your money, you need to understand how to do this. Okay, it's also nice to know, particularly if you're very engaged in a project that you want to move forward with, are you making money or are you not making money? Now, I've had people say you should never show a negative on your form. That's not very realistic. Part of what we're doing with our 4-H projects is the educational value and there's some cost associated with that. So we may not always make a profit, particularly in some project areas. And so you may have a profit one year and not the next. That is perfectly acceptable because what we want you to do is to keep an accurate record of what you have done. So all of those parts and pieces go together to form your project record form. Now, I think I mentioned at some point if you have multiple projects in the same area, so for instance, if you're in baking one, two, and three, or photography three and four, you can do one project sheet for that overall area and include everything that you did related to that. So one for baking, one for um, photography. If you're in swine and swine self-determined, you can determine if you need to do a self-determined sheet for swine or the regular swine sheet. Either way is going to be okay. But don't think that because you've done three welding projects, you have to have three separate sheets for that because, of course, you've got a more comprehensive project when you put them together for us. 
Please get in touch. If you have questions, come by the Extension office, give us a call or shoot me an email. We're glad to get you additional information or help you find all the forms for putting your book together. I wish everyone the best of luck as we close out this 4-H year and begin on the next. Thank you.